jaded in the sense of like nature is in harmony and balance. That's yeah. like this I, this Western idea of like oh. everything so harmonious in nature. It's terrifying. It's the opposite, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's such yeah. a dumb perspective. It and is. It's, it's so misinformed. It's just based on idealistic perspectives. It's uh, based on, you know, this idea of a utopia yeah. that exists in the woods. It's just not. It's tooth, fang, and claw. It's Correct. Like, it's fucking chaos. It's also based on disconnect, in my opinion. Yes. If you've spent time in the wild, yes. if you've spent time, I don't care if you're fishing, hunting, hiking, camping, whatever, but like somewhere that is really raw... You're yeah. like, holy shit, no, that's not, it's not, you know, all Shangri-La out here. Like, no, it is eat or be eaten. All. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. Um, no no other video of the Orang Pen deck? So, is that? That seems to be it. I found a it? video that looks less fake, but it's the same video, so <laughs> it just did a better job. All right, let's see what that one looks like. It looks less fake. Oh, actually, I just lost it, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I have the one that we looked up. That's it, It's that video. It's the it's same all, one. All the stories, all the Daily Mail, everything goes back to that video. Oh, okay. Must have been that. I think yeah. I might have seen just a clip of it, probably. not that longer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they probably didn't show the one when he's running on the road itself because it looks so fake. So it looks like shit, yeah, yeah, versus the one where he darts across. Yeah, yeah it, looks the, it looks like a naked person. Yeah, it or does. Like a person in a spandex costume. <laughs> Just... Dude, I, I, I went to a wedding in downtown Los Angeles a couple years ago, and there was a guy, probably had a mental illness, but he was like six foot five, walking down downtown LA, butt naked with this massive schlong just bouncing between his knees. It looked like a different species to me. I mean, this huge beard, like six foot five, massive dude just trotting down the street right. of If you LA, saw that in the woods, going in between the trees from a distance. A hundred percent. You would I'm, say, oh my God, there's giants in the woods. I'm a Bigfoot believer like that. Yeah. If I had seen that exact guy cruising through a park, right. cruising out in the woods, I'm a believer. Especially if he's covered in dirt and mm -hmm. it's dark out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, mentally ill people do wind up moving to the woods. It's happened. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. happens all the time. I remember there was this one guy who was famous uh, in Maine for, he was a legend that he would break into people's houses <laughs> and steal their stuff. And um, then they found out that he was a real person. And he he, he had dropped out of society in like the 1970s huh. and just decided to completely live by himself. Like he didn't talk to people for decades. Oh, wow. And he was by himself alone in a tent huh. in the woods and he would just steal stuff from people's houses when they weren't around. Wow. Yeah, and like live off of whatever he found or ate and I, I don't know like what his uh, like woods craft was like. Is this it? Stranger in the Woods, yeah, this sounds is the story. like it. For 27 years, That's Christopher wild. Knight lived alone in a clandestine wooded camp in a tiny in in tiny Rome. I don't know what that is. Undiscovered and unaided, breaking into camps to steal what he needed to survive. When he finally captured and arrested in April 2013, the story of the North Pond Hermit <laughs> made headlines worldwide. But Knight spoke only to one journalist, Michael Finkel. In an exclusive excerpt from his new book, Finkel explains the origins of the whispered myth that haunted central Maine for decades, the legend of the stranger in the woods. It's yeah, pretty it's cool. A, it is kind of cool. It's cool. He, like, did his own. Uh, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm sure he had all kinds of probably issues, right? But, oh, yeah, for sure. But he lived his own, <laughs> like, he made his own path. He lived off of stuff. It reminds me, have you ever heard of the, the Japanese survivor in Guam? Have you heard about that yes, story? Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. Tell that story. So from my understanding, during World War II, there was a crash in Guam and uh, from a dogfight. And this Japanese pilot or, or guy who was in the plane went and hid in a cave up on a mountain in Guam. And he spent until, like, 2002 living in this cave thinking that World War II was continuing and he thought he had a better life living in a cave and living off of the jungle because Guam is like a hub for I think United or Delta one of the major airlines so all these planes are coming in and out every day and he oh. thinks it's World War II continuing wow yeah and there's military bases and everything else in Guam so was he it just, really 2002 uh Jamie would have God, to look but I it was very it was like recent the 80s or something I didn't know it was like that's that's he must have been f old as fuck. Yeah, he was like in his seventies or so. I, I don't. I'm, I'm probably getting Let's, the date we'll, wrong. We'll but find it. But yeah, still, it, that, <laughs> that's so crazy. But can yeah, you imagine? How would you know? How would you know? And right. what if you fucked up and went in too early? Right. You know, and then right. it is still World War II, and they shoot you. Exactly. You just hang out for another year. Yep. Just just <laughs> I'll spend a couple more days in the cave. <laughs> oh my god. So what is there's it? two stories actually. We'll go with this one first. Is the one you were talking about. 
This okay, is his so name. this one... 97. 97. Oh, well, died in 97. died in 97. Yeah. So because years of, of service, 41 to 45. And then it says 1972, I but guess. Do you see that? 28 years yeah. of hiding in the jungles of Guam. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's what we're talking about there with 45. So, I, so they <clears> found him in 72. I just saw a story this morning, which it's not new. It apparently was in 2013. There was a man, uh, his a uh, man took his two sons after Vietnam came, hmm. and they were hidden in the woods for 40 years. Wow. Forced to live off rats and make loincloths out of tree bark. Man who spent 41 years living in the jungle after fleeing Vietnam War makes emotional return to his former home. 41 he, years. Wait, like, so look at the picture of him. Social skills, obviously, and he didn't know what a woman was. They said it, he said really? his father didn't tell him what a woman was. They saw five people their whole life and hid from him in the woods when they saw him. This is according oh, to what I read my earlier today. God. Huh. Do you think... Oh, my God. Like, would you... If you're put into his position, is it worth living He's like 85? that? He's 85? His father was. Oh. Father 85. So I just looked at that really quick. I'm like, yeah. God damn, he looks great. Maybe that's how we're supposed to live. <laughs> yeah, rat head was his favorite. Uh, rat head. Dude, well, who doesn't like a good rat head? <laughs> Why is his haircut so good? That's a good question. I think, this is bullshit. I think this is after they found him and they took him back to take pictures and show oh, he was probably showing off. what he was doing the whole they time. They redressed him. This is horseshit. Look right here. Yeah, they redressed him. After they redressed years. him in rags. That's yeah, what he looked like for the photos. photos. That's what he looked That's like when they found better. him. That's a little better. Yeah, that looks like a guy living in the woods. <laughs> wow. Rat head. Ugh. He's eating rat heads. What does it say? His son was killed? Was I'm say? not sure. One day his wife and two, son two of his sons were killed by a mine explosion, putting yeah. him in a state of shock. Took his two-year-old son and fled into the jungle, thereafter never having any contact with anyone else. The pair survived by foraging fruit and cassava from the forest and planting corn. They wore loincloths made of tree bark and lived in a timber hut raised five meters above the ground. So cassava is not the stuff that you need to uh, boil and, and filter and strain. No, no. no. What am I thinking of? That's uh, the other probably stuff. Probably taro. Taro root. Is that what it is? Yeah. Cassava is like a potato, basically. Right, yeah. right. What is the one that like actually has strychnine in it? They, they, it's uh, very common in the jungle of um, Central America and South America. I think taro is what you're is referring it? to because it, it's very starchy and basically inedible until you boil it down. Is that what it is? I think so. Mm. That doesn't sound familiar. It doesn't sound right. Hmm. Taro, I know what taro is. But taro, like they make taro chips. Yeah. Like you could eat taro chips. This I, this stuff they boil down. They they turn it into like a like a a meal. 